everyone! So it's coming up to Christmas time here and a little while ago, a few weeks ago, I made a video where I played some Christmas tunes for you, some of my favorite Christmas arrangements and also some brand new ones that I hadn't really looked at before but most of those were around an intermediate level and I got some feedback from you guys saying that it would be really helpful to have some easier harp pieces um, for Christmas and I noticed that it would also be really helpful for some of my students who haven't been playing for that long but would really like to play some Christmas songs um, and maybe even play at church or just around the fire with family and so I thought okay I'm gonna do what I can. I can't buy all the beginner Christmas sheet music that I can find, but I can do a little sample. So I've purchased three books and I haven't played them at all. I haven't played a single note of these ever on my harp. So I'm gonna be reacting to these for you. Okay, hold on a second. Before I carry on with this description of the three books, I just wanted to let you know that the links to each of these books are in the description box so if you're interested in purchasing them that's the easiest way to find them and then I also wanted to say that I have put timestamps in the description box and in the first comment in the comment section to tell you where I'm describing each of the books or reacting to them and specifically where I talk about the summary at the end and when I recommend which book I would suggest you purchase for different reasons. So if you don't have 40 minutes to watch this whole video, then I suggest you use those timestamps to skip around and just watch the parts that you think are most interesting. I hope that's helpful. So the first one is Green Grows the Holly by um, Suzanne Guldiman and this one seems to have more unusual Christmas songs. Um, I chose ones where there were fingering written in, where it seemed pretty easy and um, then this one was unusual Christmas songs. This one is A Harp for Christmas by Joyce Weaver. This one has better, like well-known, more well-known Christmas songs um, and there's about I don't know how many of them, 20 of them or something like that, maybe 10, I can't remember. And then this one is The 50 Christmas Carols by Sylvia Woods. And this one is also well-known, mostly well-known songs. Um, you'll see that I've got some little tabs here. That's not because I've checked which pieces I like. I haven't played them yet. But what I did do is I found the pieces in this book that are also in this book. And I thought I could compare the two for you and give you an idea of maybe which book you might like to purchase. And I'll give my reactions and I'm going to be talking about whether the pieces are possible to play on lap harp. I'm going to talk about how easy they are, especially for somebody who's only just started playing harp recently. And then I'm going to talk about whether I, I like their arrangement, whether I think it's pretty. Um, is the fingering helpful? Are there any lever changes? And then also about the key, partly so that um, it's easy for you to play even if you have a harp that um, doesn't have levers and so maybe if, if it's in the key of C that would be a plus but also because the key would affect whether you're able to sing along with those songs and I think it's really nice to be able to sing along around Christmas time um, if you can't sing along maybe your family will want to sing with you so I'm gonna look at all those different factors and I'm just gonna be giving you my initial thoughts on sight reading through these books so I hope that's interesting for you and let's see how long this video gets <laughs> Okay, so we're going to start with A Harp for Christmas, um, the Silent Night version that she has written here. Okay, it's in C major, definitely playable on a lap harp if I just look at the, um, the range. It um, looks pretty easy, we'll see how it feels. There's no lever changes. Okay, so um, there's two different versions here, an easier version and a harder version. I'm going to be doing the easier version because the purpose of this video is to find the easiest possible sheet music that will sound like the song and sounds good on the harp. Okay. She has some some notes that are um, kind of you can choose. They're optional. They've got little brackets around them. So I'm playing it without those because I want it to be easy as possible. But the fingering is written so that you were to play for if you were to play all the notes. So if you play only the optional notes, the fingering in the left hand is not very helpful. But I think you just play everything with your second finger. Maybe do the option. 
optional note here. Okay, I think that's nice and easy. Um, so So that's possible for me to sing because I'm a soprano, um, but I wouldn't. I think it would be kind of ear piercing if I were to sing that at proper, um, like really loudly. But can you sing it an octave lower? Silent night. <laughs> no, so it's not a good key for singing, but I think that's a really good arrangement for easy harp. Um, if you were to if you've never played harp before and um, you've just been playing for a few months and you want to get some Christmas tunes going, I think this would be a good arrangement. Then the harder version um, looks a little bit harder, but the nice thing about this book is that it also has, um, so for a few of the pieces, I noticed as I was just paging through it, that there's like a, a supplementary accompaniment at the back. So that's pretty cool if you have a harpist that um, a harpist friend who is a bit more advanced, then they could be playing these kind of things along with you. And that's going to sound pretty. Yeah, I think that's really pretty, so it's nice to have that supplementary accompaniment. Now let's have a look at what Sylvia Woods's arrangement of Silent Night will sound like in comparison. Okay, so the, I'm going to just play the easier one. She also has two options of an easier one and a harder one. Um. Much harder. The fingering is written in and the fingering is good, but I don't think this would be an arrangement that you could just whip up in a short amount of time if you've only been playing the harp for a few months. So it's a nice arrangement, um, but not as easy. So not as accessible maybe for the purpose of this video. Um, and then there's a more difficult version. Um, and oh, that's interesting fingering. Um, so there is a more difficult arrangement but I think you can get nicer arrangements of Silent Night if you want to be at an intermediate level like my um, uh, Sunita Stainslow one that I played in the last video I think that would be better for an intermediate arrangements um, so the easier one from, the, from Sylvia Woods is nice um, but not as easy as the Joyce Weaver book okay the next one is Joy to the World it looks like um, it's also in C, in both books actually, um, definitely playable on a, a lap harp. Let's see what it's like. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out the timing because everyone has a different amount of pause there and I just suddenly had a had a blank moment. Anyway. This this is kind of there didn't need to be so many notes in the left hand here. That would have been better, I think, if there were fewer notes, but the way it's written is It's supposed to be nature sing, but I went nature sing. Anyway, um, okay, I don't like that arrangement as much. It's in a good key for singing, which is cool. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. So it just is within an octave there. Um, 
Also, she seems to be putting these weird third fingers sometimes where you didn't need to. You could have just played it all with the second finger in the left hand. And there's so much happening in the right hand that I don't think the left hand needed to be even as busy as it was. But it's not terrible. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a nice arrangement. I just also think the, the ending was... I would have changed the ending. But let's see what Sylvia Woods does. Okay. possible on a lap half that bottom G but you could just do the top G okay maybe this is just not a right song to try and play if you've only been playing the harp for a really short amount of time because it's got quite a fast melody um, so the Sylvia Woods one, I think that there's some things about the arrangement that I like better, but there's definitely more happening in the left hand. Um, so for a, a re super beginner, um, not as possible. Um, okay, so let's look at the next one. What child is this? I'm going to cut in again here because I spent a lot of time <laughs> right here um, getting really confused about how she notated the lever settings that you had to do for this particular piece. So Joyce Weaver used a, an X where you must set that one F lever and I've never seen it notated quite like that before. So don't get confused like I did, there's no problems here, you just have to change one F lever which is pretty cool if you have a harp that doesn't have levers, you can just tune up your one F um, string into an F sharp and you'll be all set and ready to go. Okay, it looks like she wants you to place all the fingers down. This wouldn't work on all lap hops. It goes below the bottom C of a lap hop. melody as easy as it could be I didn't I would have sometimes done different fingering but um, I think that was pretty nice now let's see what um, Sylvia Woods did for this song so it's the same key interesting and it's also not you couldn't play the full arrangement on a lap harp, the left hand goes too low. Um, where were we? Um, but there's a little more happening in the left hand for the second half of the piece so it does get more difficult than the other one um. that's a really nice arrangement at a kind of um, beginning
beginner, like a late beginner level. Um, so I don't know what to say about that one. I think if you're a super beginner and you really want to play what child is this, I think you should rather attempt the Joyce Weaver one just because there's less happening in the left hand. Um, but I, I prefer the way um, Sylvia Woods wrote out the fingering for that particular piece. Anyway, that's interesting. So now let's have a look at something from Green Grows the Holly by Suzanne Guldiman because um, these are more unusual, um, not such well-known um, pieces. It's medieval and renaissance Christmas carols. So let's just start from the beginning. A babe is born, of, born all of a maid. <laughs> and um, this one is also in G major with the F sharp levers up. This book is written for lap harp, so all the pieces will work on lap harp. Um, but you do need some levers or to just tune the harp up. Now let's see. Joyce Weaver book so for a super beginner probably be a bit much to get it done in time for Christmas um, but that's really nice and it's a pretty piece let's try something else from here this is also in G major um, so with the F sharp levers up see what's happening here oh it says watch for lever changes oh no for a beginner that's very scary <laughs> choose but at least there's fingering it's helping space in the left hand and it says that we're supposed to be playing this fast because it says with spirit there was more time for the leave change what back again sharp levers sometimes they left enough space for it the left hand wasn't doing anything sometimes there wasn't oh that's annoying okay that's definitely not for a super beginner um let's see but it, it was a nice arrangement it sounded pretty if they just left a little bit more space for the lever change i think that'd be more scary less scary for people um okay let's try one more from the this book, the um, Suzanne Guldiman book. Okay, so this is also in G major, also F sharp levers. So that's really great. I wonder if the whole book is like that. Um, yeah, it looks like it. So that's cool because if you have a harp without levers, um, oh, they are, they are one or two arrangements that are in C. So without any sharp sharps. But at least you're not having to do a lot of, of changes. So if you're tuning your harp to the new key, um, you don't have to do too much hard work. Um, so now this is quietly and fairly slow. This is called Coordinatus Ex Parentis. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it. Um.
arrangement um, would need a little bit of practice and um, just because I'm trying to play all the fingering exactly as it's written I think that's also for advanced beginner so if I'm glancing through this book I would say someone who's just bought a harp in time for Christmas or buys a harp on Christmas Day uh, or gets a harp as a Christmas present and then wants to start playing Christmas arrangements this book is probably a little bit beyond you but it's still a really nice book for those who who want to play medieval and renaissance carols okay let's do a few more from um, Joyce Weaver and Sylvia Woods let's look at O Come All You Faithful also in G major this one is possible on a lever harp, I mean on a, a lap harp, so that's good. playing in the left hand it's with the second finger so this left hand fingering is not my favorite but at least it's only one note it's not too difficult um. too much happening in the left hand I think it's a pretty arrangement um, you don't have to play it as fast as I was playing so I think that's not too bad I think that will work pretty well for someone who's just learning um, harp for a short time all right here's the Sylvia Woods one also in G major so it's a good key to sing people could sing along that's great Okay, um, let's give it a try. under which is kind of an advanced technique for someone who's playing at this level so I would have chosen different fingering in the left hand um, so this arrangement is a little bit more complex I think the other book would be better for um, for a beginner but it is a nice arrangement um, I think it works so yeah now let's have a look at angels we have heard on high this is the Joyce Weaver one also in G major, um, you don't actually need any F sharps though it says. Oh that's great. So that would work well for a um, person who doesn't have levers and is tuned in C major. Um, it will work well on a lap harp, it's not too high or too low for that. Um, no lever changes, that's great. I think that's too high for most people, so this is not so great for singing along. Um, G. So you'd have to change that to the top G. It's a pity she didn't just do that with the arrangement because then it would have been so easy for lap hops. Okay. This is good 
that she's had left she has less happening in the left hand when there's the fast notes that's really nice she's telling me to do the second finger um, so I wouldn't choose this fingering but it's not it's it works fine okay this is good I think this works well for a for a beginner let's see um, what happens with the Sylvia Woods one Okay, Sylvia Woods, we're in the same key, so also just with the F sharp, but in this version we are going to use F sharps because she has a little bit more happening in the right hand. Some chords in the left hand, much more difficult. note of the piece this can be played on a lap harp um, so that's nice but it's a kind of more difficult than you need if you're just learning harp for the first time mm. interesting she puts the third finger back onto that note um, Joyce Weaver put the second finger back on but I think it's easiest to put the thumb the thumb's just right there Anyway, mm. uh, I don't know about this. something you guys I found I saw three ships in the Suzanne Guldiman book and I know that it's in both the other books too so this means we have one piece that we can compare between the three books and see what the different arrangements sound like awesome okay I'm gonna start with the Joyce Weaver book so this is I saw three ships it has it's in the key of G major it can work on a, on a lap harp um, it has just F sharps and yeah, no lever changes. Great. not what she intended she wanted you to have all the fingers placed and then you can just do what's been happening with some of the other arrangements of hers that I was just not feeling the need to place all those fingers in advance but if you do that maybe her fingering of the left hand makes more sense um, but that would take some quite some planning kind of far ahead planning which a super beginner harpist doesn't usually know to put all those fingers onto the strings in advance so it's a helpful fingering but you'd need to know what to do with it Okay, but that's a really nice, simple arrangement. I think that's really great. You don't need anything more than that. Let's see what um, Sylvia Woods did. So it's also in G major um, with just F sharps. 
there's some notes that are below a lap harp or just the last chord of the harp of the piece so you could just change that last chord and you could play it on a lap harp let's see what she does so the left hand is moving much faster nice just there's more than the Joyce Weaver one um, but the ending of it it felt like it was quite a lot of notes for how it doesn't give you payoff for that to do all of that in the left hand it, it doesn't seem to add as much as as it adds in difficulty um, so it's an okay arrangement but I think the Joyce Weaver one is better for a real beginner let's see what this one does so this is the Suzanne Guldimun arrangement. Ooh, my C sharp, you guys. I mean, my C is flat. Oh, this one isn't in G. This one is in C. Okay. And it can, obviously can be played on the lap harp. So... So that is not the same song at all. So the ones from um, Sylvia Woods and from Joyce Weaver was I saw three ships come sailing in. But the one from Suzanne Guldiman was I saw three ships and apparently those are different tunes. Um, okay, well the Suzanne Guldiman one is works well for lap hop and if you like interesting Christmas songs that are from medieval and renaissance um, times then I think this one is a good one to do but it doesn't work so well for a super beginner um, but I think it seems like a nice book then the um, Sylvia Woods one the positive of that is that you get 50 Christmas carols that's really cool um, and they all have an easier and a harder version I think the harder version you could find a nicer arrangement um, from maybe Sunita Stainslow or someone like that at the same kind of difficulty. The easier one, they're, they're quite nice arrangements um, but they're not as easy as you might expect. Um, so when you're just learning to play the harp for the first time I think these easy ones will probably be a little bit beyond you but it would be really nice for sight reading as maybe an interme intermediate level harpist that might be a good one if you're going to play at a whole lot of gigs and you need 50 Christmas carols and you want everything that people could possibly ask for maybe that piece that book would be best for that but I think this book by Joyce Weaver A Harp for Christmas I think that's aptly named because I think um, for somebody who's just bought a harp or been given a harp for Christmas and you want to quickly get some sheet music, I think this would be your best bet. You'd be most likely to, out of all the books that you could buy, I think this one would be the best one to be able to quickly whip up on Christmas Day when you get your harp. I think for people who have never played an instrument before, it would still be a bit much. You'd need a little while to practice, maybe a few months to get to this point. But for those who have played another musical instrument before, I think the easier version of these pieces would be would be possible for you to learn in a very short time. And then it's nice that there's extra supplementary accompaniments at the back that will really add to those. Um, and yeah, I haven't looked at the other ones, but they look really nice. So there's just one, two, three, four of those at the back. And then if you have a harpist friend or even a 
pianist friend they could play along with the supplementary accompaniments. Um, awesome! So I think these are some good discoveries. I don't regret any of my purchases, but I think for a beginner harpist, the best bet is A Harp for Christmas by Joyce Weaver. Um, so let me know if you'd like any other Christmas type videos um, or if there's any sheet music that you'd still like me to review and give my first impressions. But I'll see you again next week Thursday. Bye!